Atlanta County Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for watching. Just a few short months ago, the Maryland General Assembly passed a bill that decriminalized 10 grams or less of marijuana. Now a group of council members want to do the same thing when it comes to paraphernalia. The resolution has been introduced by council member Nancy Navarro, and she has the support of six of her colleagues. Susan Kennedy has a story. Uh, so here in Montgomery County, it is always our um, tradition to highlight those issues that we feel need to be addressed. At a press conference this week, Councilmember Nancy Navarro announced the introduction of a resolution that calls on the state to decriminalize the possession of marijuana paraphernalia to the same level pot penalties are downgraded. She has the support of six of her colleagues who all agree there is a loophole in the new law that needs to be closed. The resolution then also asks our county uh, police department, our law enforcement officials, uh, to please uh, make sure that they understand that the sense of the council is that possession of small amounts of marijuana and paraphernalia by adults should be among the county's lowest law enforcement priorities. The way the law is currently written, individuals could be punished more severely for possession of paraphernalia than for marijuana itself. Councilmember Navarro also has the support of a host of state and county leaders on this issue. And one of the things that I'm so happy that Councilmember Navarro and her colleagues are highlighting is this idea that um, it does create other problems on someone's record. It does create an educational problem. And that's what we're trying to stop. We're trying to make sure that um, children make the right decisions, young people make the right decisions, but at the same time, the wrong decision does not put them behind the eight ball for the rest of their lives. Navarro is also concerned about the disproportionate amount of drug enforcement that falls on non-whites. An ACLU report finds African American county residents are 3.2 times more likely to be arrested for simple marijuana possession than whites, even though blacks and whites have been shown by surveys to use marijuana at comparable rates. Any issue, no matter what policy goal it might be, uh, that is addressing those uh, uh, areas around disproportionality and, and around over-representation in a negative way, um, that we should highlight that and that we should support it going even further. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. The county breaks ground for what will be a new housing complex for seniors in the heart of vibrant downtown Silver Spring. The new $44 million mixed income apartment building will be located right next to the new public library. Those over 62 years of age who want a more active lifestyle and affordable rental options will soon have the Bonifat at Silver Spring, an 11-story mixed income apartment building for active seniors. But this project uh, combines something that we really need support and help on, and that is to respond to the real challenges of our seniors. 18.1% of our population is above the age of 65. The building will sit right next door to the new Silver Spring Library and the future Purple Line light rail station. Uh, this goes a long way in making it possible for to have seniors right in the heart of Silver Spring. Uh, you talked about seniors not wanting to hear the loud music. I'm not sure some seniors want to hear loud music. <laughs> you know, we have a beautiful ice skating ring right down the street. I'm sure I'm going to see some seniors out there skating. So this is a community for everyone. And I am just so delighted that we're able to move forward on a project that not only do well for the seniors, but for the vitality of this community. The Bonifat at Silver Spring will provide 149 mixed income apartments and 6,300 square feet of retail space on the ground floor. The residential building will have 10 studios, 119 one bedrooms, and 20 two bedrooms. The Bonifat at Silver Spring is a public private partnership between Montgomery Housing Partnership and the Donahue Companies. Construction is expected to be completed by January 2016. For more information, visit thebonifat.com. Construction of another recreation center has begun. Executive Ike Leggett, along with council members and state officials, participated in the groundbreaking ceremony of the North Potomac Community Recreation Center on Travilla Road in Rockville. This will be the sixth recreation facility project in the last four years. 
The project provides for the design of a 48,000 square foot facility that will include a full-size gymnasium, exercise room, social hall, kitchen, lounge, game room, and conference room. It will also have an outdoor playground. Ride-on passengers will soon see a hike on fares. To keep ride-on bus fares consistent with rates approved by the Washington Metropolitan Area Transit Authority, County Council approved transit rate changes beginning July 1st. The new fares will go up to $1.75 for passengers paying with cash, token, or smart trip card. The Metrorail to ride-on transfer with smart trip card will be $1.25. Seniors with identification will pay $0.85 cents during the non-free periods. The Kids Ride Free program will be from 2 to 8 p.m. For more information on monthly passes and other information, visit rideonbus.com or call 311. The 2014 gubernatorial primary election in the state takes place on Tuesday, June 24th. We remind voters that the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. For more information, visit 777vote.org. The 4th of July is just around the corner and the county will host fireworks displays in Germantown and Kensington. The county's Independence Day fireworks will be at the Maryland Soccerplex in the South Germantown Recreational Park and at Albert Einstein High School. Displays will begin at 9.15 p.m., but there will be concerts starting at 7. Low lawn chairs, blankets, and coolers are welcome at both events. Food vendors will be on site and no alcohol is permitted. The rain date for fireworks is only July 5th. For more information, call 240-777-6821 or visit montgomerycountymd.gov slash rec. When we come back, summer is already here and authorities are warning about getting ready for possible summer storms. And the city of Rockville celebrates its finest first responders. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. This tree comes alive during Heritage Days weekend, June 28th and 29th. Discover Montgomery County's historical treasures during this free countywide event. The two-day festival offers visitors an opportunity to sample numerous sites representing the history, culture, and natural beauty of Montgomery County. Join us for Heritage Days, June 28th and 29th, from noon until 4 p.m., all over Montgomery County. For more information, call 301-515-0753 or go to heritagemontgomery.org. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County Government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Lorna Pagelli. The 2014 hurricane season is now underway and local officials are reminding residents about the importance of being prepared. My MC Media's Sonia Burke has the story. The 2014 hurricane season is now underway and local officials are reminding residents about the importance of being prepared. Regardless of how many storms are forecast for this summer, preparation is essential. Emergency management officials say developing a plan and assembling an emergency storm kit are two of the most important ways to prepare for severe weather and other emergencies before they occur. And disasters happen more often than you might think. The Red Cross typically responds to over 70,000 disasters a year nationally and 500 locally. Tornadoes and flooding and hazardous material accidents, a derecho, the slow slope failure, we've had it all in this community. You want to have a plan? You want to have a kit, and then you want to actually sign up for Alert Montgomery. And then the last but not least, you want to think about how you can volunteer or work with your neighbors to make sure they're prepared as well. 
Officials say your storm kit should be able to sustain you and your family for three to five days. Battery uh, operated flashlights, uh, uh, crank radio, uh, a way of, of staying informed and abreast of what's going on. Uh, there's water in here. You need a gallon per person uh, per day. Uh, some food. During a live line simulation, PEPCO officials demonstrated the dangers of downed wires and tree branches that can follow severe weather. Leave that wire alone. Call the first responders. Call PEPCO. I'd much rather have the conversation with you that you're upset because it took us so long to get out there than I would have a conversation that someone's been injured or killed on that site because they took that they took it upon themselves to move that wire. The number to call PEPCO to report outages and down lines is 1-877-PEPCO-62. The utility has also updated its website with information about reporting and monitoring outages and storm preparation tips. For County Report This Week, I'm Sonia Burke. The city of Rockville recently celebrated those who serve in the line of duty at the Public Safety Awards ceremony. Katie Garrity from Rockville 11 has a story. I'm here at the city of Rockville's police department. Some of the brave men and women who work here were recently recognized in the 2014 Public Safety Awards. This year marked 25 years of celebrating the city's police officers, firefighters, and other first responders who make an extra effort to keep Rockville and Montgomery County safe. It's uh, a long running, a quarter of a century of being able to, for service groups to come together with the community to be able to honor the officers on all those different agencies for the things they do. Among those recognized was Corporal Jan Sealhammer, who went above and beyond the call of duty with her shift in attempting to save the life of a teen found at the bottom of a pool. It's nice to be recognized, but I always look at it that it is part of my job. Um, these are the things that we as police officers face and should expect to um, deal with in our careers. Officer Chad Bates received the Citation for Bravery Award for his quick decision making in a dangerous encounter with a woman carrying a weapon. I knew that I had an opportunity to use less lethal force against her to subdue her uh, and I did and it, everything worked out and everybody, everybody went home safe. Both officers said they're motivated by the community and their fellow officers to do their job day in and day out. The awards show their hard work does not go unnoticed. We stop and take a moment to really say thank you sincerely and um, honor those who have done so much for us and continuously put their lives on the line to protect the rest of the community. For Rockville 11, I'm Katie Giardi. And now we get the latest on transportation with an update from Tom Pogue from the county's Department of Transportation. Tom? Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update from Montgomery County. County Executive Leggett announced that MCDOT's eight-year bus stop improvement program has enhanced ADA accessibility and pedestrian safety at 2,900 bus stops. Mr. Leggett noted the county's holistic approach that looks at bus stops not in isolation, but as a component in safe travel pathways. Improving pedestrian safety has been a priority of his administration, and transit passengers are pedestrians at each end of their trip. Where needed, DOT is adding sidewalks, safer pedestrian crossings, traffic calming measures, more lighting, and road improvements to create safer, more walkable communities. Upgrades under this $11 million capital program were first made to stops with the highest ridership and those deemed in most urgent need of improvement. Now, work continues to upgrade the 500 remaining more difficult bus stops. The average cost to improve each stop is $3,000. For more information, visit our website at montgomerycountymd.gov slash mcdot. We're working to keep you moving. When we come back, thousands of students celebrate the end of the school year. We'll take you to a couple of MCPS schools. And Montgomery College opens doors to a newly renovated state-of-the-art building. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Canada Report this week. I'm Lorna Virgili. A day after the last MCPS seniors donned their caps and gowns, MCPS schools end their instruction for the year. MCPS TV visited a few schools on that last day. High school graduation ceremonies mark the end of the school year as students celebrate with family and prepare to move on to the next chapter in their lives. I'm going to Trinity University in Washington, D.C. I'm the first of the Tobar family to go to college. Schools throughout MCPS celebrated the end of the school year with clap-out ceremonies for fifth graders, dances, parties, and good old-fashioned fun. We're celebrating the end of the school year and doing our happy dance. I love every school year because I work with different groups of kids every year, so I get to form new relationships and see the different growth in the different kids and see their confidence and reading levels improve. A long-standing tradition at Bell Elementary School is the Bridge of Years Walk. Principal Elliot Alter explains. Every year at the end of the school year, we take our entire student body, K through four, line them up, and our fifth graders pass through to celebrate and say goodbye as our fifth graders are heading off to middle school for next year. Teacher Ryan Menk of Julius West Middle School used part of his last day to conduct a little research. So today we're going to be taking a survey to wrap up the end of the year. It's a reflection on yourself as a learner. Uh, it's providing me feedback as a teacher. I had a really good group of students this year, uh, very successful. We had a lot of good supports in place for them. I think that they really put forth a lot of effort and uh, overall it was a really successful year. Students, teachers and staff reflected on the school year. For us it's been a fantastic year. We have grown as a school, we've watched our children grow, and we're just excited about what's next to come for us. The highlight of my school year was the plays we did. I took Spanish this year and I can't wait to take it next year. This year we did this really cool unit on forensics and science and we got to work as a big group. I really enjoyed outdoor ed where we got to go outside and spend like three days out in the outdoors and do all these fun activities and just bond with all of our friends. Jerry Sedman spoke about his retiring from the teaching profession. This is my 39th and last year. I'm truly going to miss the kids and this has been a second home to me. Others discussed their summer plans and hopes. This summer I hope my students continue to read, continue to write, share their experiences um, and do some math problems. I'm definitely going to read over the summer. This summer I'm going to do a lot of traveling with my family. We're ready for summer! As students left school on their last day, they were met with cheers, tears, hugs, as well as waves of goodbye and good luck. In an effort to prevent drunk driving during the summer months, the county's Department of Liquor Control is partnering with a designated driver program called Be My Designated Driver to encourage people to plan their night out and ensure a safe ride home. The program is an affordable designated driver service offering an alternative transportation solution. To learn more about the program, visit this website or call 240-777-1904. Improvements continue on the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. The newly renovated Science East building was unveiled to the public recently, revealing a modern new learning facility for students. The latest phase of the Rockville Science Center celebrated its grand opening recently with an open house event. I'm delighted to welcome you to a wonderful renovated facility that expands our new Science Center. In attendance were faculty and administrators from Montgomery College as well as elected representatives from Montgomery County and the state of Maryland. I knew I was going to be a math teacher from very early on. I just could not wait to get new school supplies and to see that uh, new semester start. And the opening of the, of the renovated Science East building was by far the best first day of class ever with the best school supply list we could imagine. Montgomery College is already a hub for future engineers and scientists. This campus is home to the nation's largest engineering transfer program the nation's largest. The number of students enrolled in STEM program study here at Montgomery College increased by nearly 2,000 students. That's a 76% increase in the past five years. We are making a very bold statement that we are committed, and we're committed for the long haul. A tour followed the presentations, showing off the new classroom and lab spaces. 
Science East reopening is the second of three phases that will conclude with the renovation of Science West, leaving Montgomery College with a state-of-the-art complex that will help educate students far into the future. This is a starting point for so many young people in our community. Having world-class facilities to go with world-class educators will form the quality education and the skills necessary for us as a community to compete in the 21st century. Taking classes in the new building is very exciting and it makes me excited to come to class because the new classrooms are very refreshing, they're bright, they're cheery, the teachers are excited to be there and we have lots of new fancy things like our new computer labs, our new lounges, study areas. It's just, it's exciting that we have a new place to work and learn. For County Report This Week from Montgomery College, I'm John Watson. The Korean Community Service Center is working to help empower and connect local immigrants. My MC Media's Valerie Bunk has a story of how the organization is reaching out to the Korean community in Montgomery County. I'm here in Gaithersburg where the largest branch of the Korean Community Service Center of Greater Washington works to connect and serve the growing Korean community in Montgomery County. For me, like working here is a very, very rewarding thing because as a one of the immigrant family member, I can feel the same difficulty and same like situation like many Korean immigrants are experiencing here. Yor Yun Lee helps the Korean Community Service Center reach more than 4,000 residents in Montgomery County. This nonprofit's mission is to empower Asian Americans and new immigrants through social services and education. When I saw that like I am improving their life and I help them to connect it to other like important services, it's very rewarding. I felt that I was lucky to have lots of um, benefits uh, by working for international organizations and um, Korean uh, government agency. So I figured that this is time I can contribute and give back to the community. The organization received more than $90,000 in county grants this year, including money to help with counseling services for victims of domestic violence cases that they see often. Because of a cultural issue, like many Korean like speaking or Korean immigrants, they don't report their like incident to our DB issues to the police department. The immigration things they it's very complicated so they have some fear when we found the great need from the Korean community. So we start this program and we like always exceed our outcome because we is really like in great need. Lots of Korean immigrants, even they lived here a long time, they have still kind of cultural barriers and extreme language barriers. For County Report This Week, I'm Valerie Bonk. Coming up, we invite you to a countywide festival that celebrates the county's heritage. And if you're going to the Quicken Loans Golf Tournament at Congressional, stay tuned because we'll tell you where to park. Order your tickets now to celebrate 37 years of great summer dinner theater at MC. This summer's musicals are the hilarious Susical the Musical and the highly acclaimed Les Miserables. Order tickets online or call the box office to reserve your seat. And two MC teams are hosting clinics for kids this summer. MC's women's basketball team offers week-long sessions through July 25th and MC's men's soccer team is holding week-long sessions through July 31st. Registration for summer and fall classes at Montgomery College has begun, so now's the best time to sign up for the classes you want when you want to take them. Register in person at any of our three campuses or online anytime 24 hours a day. Welcome back to County Report This Week, I'm Lorna Virgili. Mark your calendars for the last weekend of June for Heritage Montgomery's annual celebration. This countywide festival on June 28th and June 29th provides visitors the opportunity to discover venues from Silver Spring to Poolsville, Bethesda to Clarksburg and anywhere in between. During the weekend celebration, visitors will discover our area's history and much more. You can find out more about Heritage Days 
visiting this website. It's time to visit Brookshire Gardens and check out what our friends there have for us today. Have you ever considered the benefits of organic gardening? Hi, I'm Kathy Stevens and I'm here at Brookside Gardens where we have been trying to garden organically, which is another way of saying naturally or green gardening. We do a variety of things here from using composted leaves for mulch that we get from the city of Tacoma Park. That saves us the expense and also the use of fossil fuels to transport mulch in from out of our region. Um, we also use wood chips that are provided to us by the tree crews that are part of the Parks Department. We also try to use a minimum of chemical insecticides and only when absolutely necessary, we use a program called Integrated Pest Management, which helps us manage our pests using uh, the least toxic products. And we try to use natural or low toxicity products like horticultural oil whenever possible. Synthetic chemicals and fertilizers are used as a last resort. There are lots of things you can do to garden naturally and you can come to Brookside Gardens to find out how. For more gardening tips, you can visit brooksidegardens.org. There will be a lottery for free farmers market coupons worth $30. To participate, you must be a low income senior over 60 years of age and with an income of less than $21,000. The coupons may be used at farmers markets in Montgomery County and participating markets in the District of Columbia until the end of November. The lottery will take place on Wednesday, July 2nd at 10.30 a.m. at the following locations. Each eligible senior can register for the lottery between 9.30 and 10.30 a.m. on that day. For more information, call 240-777-3810. And now let's meet our Pet of the Week. Here's Kathy Stanhope from the Humane Society. Kathy? This is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And this is Amy. She's a little love, two years old. She's already been spayed and she's looking to go home with you. She's an affectionate little kitty, and I'm told that she likes to reach out her paw and touch you when she wants a little attention. So visit Amy on the web at mchumane.org, or give us a call at 240-252-2555. The Quicken Loans National Tournament will be held at Congressional Country Club in Bethesda from June 23rd through the 29th. County departments and agencies have been working on pre-tournament arrangements and logistics to help spectators to and from the tournament and to enjoy the overall experience. Here is a list of parking locations. County officials remind anyone planning to attend the tournament that if driving, they must use one of the official tournament parking and shuttle lots. The free summer concerts at Veterans Plaza are just around the corner. Here's this year's lineup for the 2014 Silver Spring Summer Concert Series presented by Discover Communications and Live Nation. The outdoor concerts will be held on Thursday evenings starting on June 26th through August 14th from 7 to 9 p.m. And with that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. Today, we leave you with some images of the Blues Festival that took place at Veterans Plaza in downtown Silver Spring. I'm Lorna Virgili, and thank you for joining us. Oh.